<laughs> okay, these allegations are false. I didn't do those things. I don't know what else to say. Last month, former Penn State assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky was arrested on charges of sexual abuse of children. Since then, other questions have emerged. What did officials around him know, and what did they do? This is Joe Christmas Becker of the New York Times. I sat down with Sandusky um, several times this week at the home of his lawyer, Joseph Christmas Amendola. We spoke not only about the allegations and the university, but also about Second Mile, the charity he founded, and his feelings toward the children that it served. Portions of my interview were captured on camera, but others only in audio. Yeah, I, I talked to Mr. Sandusky about some of his activities with children of Second Mile. I think that some people think taking a kid overnight trips to a game, being in a shower with a kid that isn't your own, that has been alarming to some people, those facts. And I think if what I think what I heard you say is you didn't see it as like somebody else's kid. You saw it more like these kids are part of my my family. Is that? And they, you know, so many of them would say that. But is that? You know, it, yeah. I mean, I'm so kinda... I mean, that was a mutual feeling, you know, a family like feeling. It was, you know, it was an extended family. We were an extended family, an extended father. But that is that was... why you didn't have the kind of bar barriers or red flags up that somebody else might, you know, say, I don't want to be alone in a room with a kid. I mean... Yeah. In a grand jury report released last month, Sandusky was charged with 40 counts of sexually abusing young boys. In 1998, an investigation was launched by university police and the State Child Protection Agency. A mother claimed Sandusky had hugged her 11-year-old son while showering with him in a Penn State locker room. I asked Sandusky about the extent of that investigation. I, would, I was talked to once. You know, by an officer? By the two, by one person from Children and Youth and by... And an officer. And that was uh, it? Yeah. And as far as you know... And bang, right after that, then we got an unfounded report. That was within a couple of days, I think. Law enforcement officials closed the investigation and it appears no further action was taken by the university. Sandusky said the university president never confronted him Neither did his boss, Joe Paterno, Penn State's legendary head coach. How could Coach Paterno and Graham Spanier not know that one of the star coaches on the football team you know, at least was being investigated? I don't know that he didn't know. Mm -hmm. I know that he didn't never said anything to me. I know that. In 2002, there was another incident in the locker room showers. An assistant football coach, Mike McQuarrie, has testified to the grand jury that he witnessed Mr. Sandusky sodomizing a young boy and that he reported some version of that scene to Mr. Paterno the following day. Paterno has testified that he then informed the university's athletic director, Tim Curley, that Sandusky had done something sexually inappropriate with a young boy. Curley, who has been charged with lying to the grand jury, testified that he was told that Sandusky was inappropriately, quote, horsing around, unquote, with a boy in the shower. Curley met Sandusky to discuss the incident. Here's what Sandusky said. Yeah, he was concerned. I mean, you know, he was concerned about it, yeah. Did he talk about horseplay? How did he couch it when he raised it with you, in other words? He, he must have said, he didn't, you're saying he certainly didn't say what's being said today. So what, what did he say? Just that some, somebody was uncomfortable and? Well, he was coming to me with a concern. And uh, he was coming to me with a concern because, you know, and I guess in his words, somebody had talked to him about um, inappropriate behavior in the shower. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so. And you told him we were, this is... Yeah, I, I told him that I, you know, it didn't happen. And, uh, you know, there wasn't, in my mind, there wasn't inappropriate behavior. And I said, if you, if you want, you could speak to the, the, the person, young person that was involved. I asked what restrictions Curley put on Sandusky, who by then was retired yet still had access to the university's facilities. Right, I wasn't, he didn't want me to bring kids in there and work them out anymore. And I, I remember saying, well, could I just work them out? And he said, no. 
And then, what, did he, like, take your keys? Or you, you were no, able to keep going there? No, right? he didn't take my keys. I still have my keys. Okay. And I still went in there and worked out. Prosecutors say all the alleged victims passed through Sandusky's Second Mile program. Talk to me, if you will, about sort of, how, you know, sort of how you kind of physically interacted with kids and, and how sort of to understand that within the context of the second mile. Because I think some of the things, if you don't have any context, might seem to some people showering with kids, blowing on their stomach, bear hugging them, might to some people in a vacuum seem strange. I, I don't, I wasn't playing, I mean, that was just me. I, I don't know. You know, like I said, I, I, I grew up at a recreation center. There was constant activity. I worked on a playground. I loved active kids. Press further about his physical interaction with Second Mile children. He had this to say. The environment was, 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 was family-like. I mean, and, 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 and I guess, you know, in, in times that, that you had with them, you always, those, all the times were precious times. You know, they they were they were significant times because they weren't they, they, you know, they were they weren't going to have you and you weren't going to have them. You know, so it was there was all kind of it was significant times. It was important times, and um, so I mean, I guess it just happened that way. I don't know. Sandusky maintains his innocence and remains out on bail while state prosecutors build their case. He has only spoken out one other time since his arrest in a phone interview with Bob Costas on NBC. Are you sexually attracted to young boys, to underage boys? Am I sexually attracted to yes. underage boys? Sexually attracted? You know, no, I, I enjoy young people. I'm sitting there saying, well, what in the world is this question? You know, what, what, what is, you know, Am I going to be, if I say, no, I'm not attracted to boys, that's not the truth because I'm attracted to young people, boys, girls. Yeah, but not uh, sexually. You're attracted because you enjoy spending time. Right. I enjoy, I, that's what I was trying to say. I, en I enjoy spending time with young people. I enjoy spending time with people. I mean, my two favorite groups are the elderly and the young. The young because... They, they don't think about what they say in the old because they don't care. You know, so those, I love being around both groups, both those groups of people because, and neither one of them are going anywhere. They're not caught up like all of us in trying to make a living and trying to, to impress people. They, they are who they are, and, and that's why I love those groups. Those are my two favorite groups of people. Oh, you're gonna lay down. I miss coaching. I miss second mile. I miss second mile kids. I miss interrelationships with all kinds of people. I miss my own grandkids. I miss. <laughs> I don't miss. I don't miss my dog. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I miss. Yeah, good grief.